capo on here to keep these uh, the strings and everything under control. They like to pop out of the of the uh, the old school tuners um, if it's not uh, organized like that. I took the neck off and I gave it a good tweak. Okay, I gave it uh, it's a judgment call. I gave it what I consider to be a good a good torque, anticipating the amount of pressure it would it would need to be uh, in the state that I want it in. Okay. And uh, and then reinstalled the neck again, just two screws. Cause I might have to take it off again, you know. Uh, and uh, now we're getting that off there. I'm going to double check my alignment here. Okay, that looks not too bad. Again, I, this thing wants to be tilt towards the treble side. Not doing any, any undue force or anything like that. That looks great. Okay, I'm just gonna set that. Get the screws again. Hottest pressure on your neck screws. You know, you don't torque the crap out of them. I've seen the <laughs> the screw heads um, just torque right down, and it compresses all this wood, and it distorts the plate. You don't have to be gorilla man. You know, just good, you know, moderate pressure on there, and that's that's dandy. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to bring this up to pitch. That was my uh, A440 pitch board, by the way. Buzz there. Wonder where that's from. Well, we will find out. Okay. Sorry, right, I'm going to take two seconds and see if I can locate what that little sizzle is all about. Let's push the string around a little. Beauty. Okay, it was just a little softness down here. A little, something was a little out of joint. Moving it around, and my relief is pretty good. Oh yeah, it's real good. I like that. So there's at some point in the, uh, I will have you look around for it. I'll have a very specific video on reading neck relief uh, there's I could I've always said I could write a book on neck relief it's a very um, interesting process uh, involving compression torque uh, all sorts of interesting things and every instrument uh, has its own little kind of thing where it's it likes this doesn't like that or, or whatnot you know it's, it's pretty it's really quite remarkable uh, just as an aside I had a basin a brand Brand spanking new, top of the line, branded bass, really nice, beautiful neck on it, and it was punched from the get go. Punched, you know, like the neck was just like I, I couldn't find a, a happy spot on that. Uh, like during the the, the 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 relief setup, the neck would either bow back here because of too much compression here. Or, and it had a scoop up here, and it was just, I mean, this is a brand new instrument. I go, buddy, I said to the owner, take that back for warranty. And he didn't, and that's, that's okay, okay? That's his choice to do that. But in my books, I go, that is a subpar instrument. I, I have special tricks and things that I do to, to, to coax necks into better condition uh, when I see them like that. And I tried with this one, and it, it wouldn't settle down. And he's got a compromised instrument that's brand new, top end too, not cool. Okay, but it just shows, you know, like even uh, brand name stuff is uh, not immune to the natures of force and uh, the, the natural quirkiness of wood, internal soft spots could be whatever. You know, anyway, it was, it was unfortunate. Back to our show here. This bit of relief looks good. The string height looks not too bad. It might. Uh, uh, work a little bit on that treble side, okay? But at the moment, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to cut this nut. I'll give you a brief rundown of how I'm going to do this. Uh, if you watch some of my other videos, that you'll have there's a little more uh, perhaps in-depth uh, explanation of this process. Okay, I have my way of doing it. It's not the end-all, be-all. It's my preference. Uh, I use light and gaps, light gaps, let's say, to uh, to do this. But I'm just going to make sure that we have this these slots properly ramped. The height on that. Low E is good. What, I, what I'm looking for is a certain amount of light gap between the, the, the string and the top of the fret, okay? Using the ambient light that's in here. I, it, it, when I first moved in here some time back, uh, uh, quite a few years now, uh, compared to my old shop, this lighting was very different. It took, I had to relearn the process, but it only took, took that a short time. Anyway, I'm back cutting this a little bit to finesse front edge of the slot there. And I'm using my select files here. I'll use certain files for certain strings. Okay. Once again, uh, the whole nut cutting job is a story for another day. Actually, there's a, uh, I have some of it in, an, in another video that I got pretty in-depth with it, but I want to take it, boy, this one's being fussy. I want to take it and use a, give you guys a real uh, deep explanation on, on um, at least my process, okay? If you can make use of it, that's awesome. Okay, those, again, that's about, about a 50 thou uh, needle file. This is a specific file, uh, a D-string for acoustic uh, this is a, let's see, what is this again, this is a 16, yes, it's a 16, but I'm going to look for a 20, there's my 20, okay, I like to use a 20 here just for starters, okay, just so I know that the walls are, are good, okay, that's good, it's binding a little bit, and that's, that's not a problem. And I'll get in here with the 16, and I'll just wah, like that, okay? Now I leave a little bit more height on the G string, because it's a wrangly string. It's like the, the, when, you, when you pluck it, it's just like, it's not doing this sort of thing. It's doing this, okay? So we want to accommodate that. Now remember, this is all dependent on having the the relief set up properly to begin with, okay? And I'm on to the uh, second string. I will use my 13. This one's fairly high, so I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive here. You can actually compensate for certain, say, in idiosyncrasies at the nut and your playing style, if you take the time to study it properly and understand deflection, intonation, and a bunch of other nifty little tidbits, okay? Uh, there's more than one right way to tune a guitar. Tune, uh, some people will, some people have um, a vice-like grip on, they're naturally heavy-handed, and other people are very, very soft, okay? Their, their approach is very light, and the, the nut and the whole instrument can be set up to tailored or tailored to their their particular styles and that includes the nut okay that's dandy and I'm gonna finish up uh, with my stubby 10 here notice I, I don't have it under the under the, the button or the, the string tree here and that's that's fine because I don't want to wrestle with it okay I'll get a, a fair read with it as is I'm very very careful not to nick the back end of the neck too, okay? This back ridge here. Sometimes they're, um, they're, they extend a little bit too far back during the manufacturing process and you can't avoid but hit them. And that's just the way it goes. Sometimes, you, of course, you don't want to, but... So, as I'm doing that, if you can notice, I'm, I cut slanted this way, slanted that way, a few strokes, and then back I cut the back wall, or the back, say the, the trailing edge, and then 
uh, finesse. I'll just go across the, uh, the slot itself at the last couple cuts. Okay, that's really good. You can get the, the first uh, string down pretty fine without uh, worrying about any kind of buzz or anything like that. So, again, I'm not going to get into too much more detail about that, but that, as far as I'm done, that's done. That is done. I, I know where the instrument's sitting. I won't have to touch that again because I'm not taking the neck off at this point. Funny thing might happen here, okay? We might have some leftover compression uh, from adjusting the truss rod, which will force the neck up, okay? Uh, and uh, I will make a, a point of telling my client that I had to use a couple good torques on that neck and, and if it decides to move, it's not a problem, it's just a matter of a readjustment, that's service after the fact and that's good business, okay? Uh, always always uh, throw that out there that you, you don't want to say, so, well, you know, I, I couldn't, do, I don't know where it's going to be, yeah, d d don't play that card, that's just not cool. You want to make sure that your customer is cared for and that you're, you're knowledgeable enough to anticipate these, uh, these natural changes and, and help them to understand that it is natural and that they're taken care of, you're going to care for them, okay? That's a, that's a good deal. Okay, so um, that being done, I'm pretty comfortable with getting those strings under there, which is good to go. i give that screw up there a little test, that's good, I like that. Okay, so now we're down here, now we're going to get into the final phase of the actual setup process, okay, which is... Um, uh, dealing with the the saddles and uh, and uh, getting the the actual uh, action down here uh, fixed up or where it, where it's going to wind up. So I'll relate this before I, I'm going to take a break, but I want to relate this one thing which I come to over and over and over, which is what I call the the triangle of a perfect saddle, and that is you have three points that constitute let's say the perfect saddle. And imagine it like a perfect triangle, okay? If any one of those points is out of balance, the whole thing is skewed. One point is your nut. Another point is the bridge, the saddles, that, this whole area here. And the other point would be the relief in the neck. All those things have to be in harmony to achieve uh, the, the ideal setup. Once we deal with the nut, that is essentially done. Uh, you should never have to worry about it again unless it wears or needs replacement through breakage or whatever. This and the, your relief, that's really where the meat and potatoes is going to happen. Uh, this for the most part can be, once, it, once you have your, your radius set, you shouldn't have to tinker with that anymore. Uh, except to maybe uh, generally raise or lower things and you can do that like the same amount of turns uh, per for uh, adjuster here and whatnot. Your intonation, once it's set, unless you change the uh, string gauges, you shouldn't have to deal with that again either, okay? Uh, and really the, 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 the hero in this whole thing is the relief in the neck because that will dictate how the whole thing is going to uh, going to react under your hands, okay? I tend to aim for a point where everything is moderate, uh, nice, relatively easy action, uh, I speak with the individuals, I watch them play and get a sense of how they approach the instrument and that sticks in my mind again and uh, uh, we, we set it up accordingly and I already have that information for this, uh, for this person, okay? Anyway, uh, on with the show again, I'm going to take a short break and get right back, thanks.